We have one more building block before we do an example that illustrates the stiffness method. We'll start by noting that in the stiffness method, the strategy is to hold all degrees of freedom artificially fixed and then reversing this error. And to do so, we need to calculate the forces that must be present to hold all the degrees of freedom fixed. These are summarized in Appendix C, and there's a couple of examples below. We'll see how to apply this by example. If we look at example C that we considered previously, the idea is to calculate what the forces are given the distributed load W and given this degree of freedom that we previously determined. You'll note that there's no degree of freedom right here, and that's because we've chosen to reduce that degree of freedom out, that is, allow the node to rotate, and we'll see here how we deal with that. We're going to use the results that are contained in Appendix C the same way as we did before for forces due to end rotations by drawing each half of the member and by then drawing the forces that must be present. We'll consider also what the deformed shape is. If I hold all of my degrees of freedom fixed, this left-hand segment is going to deform like that, like a fixed fixed beam. This right-hand segment is going to deform like this, like a propped cantilever beam. And let me draw this actually a little bit more clearly so we can tell. It's going to have a flat slope, and on the right-hand side, it will definitely have a rotation. Now that we have an idea of the deformed shape, we know what the moments look like. On the left-hand member, we have negative moment at each end. On the right-hand member, we have negative moment on the left end and no moment on the right end. We can also think about what our shears do. And here, as opposed to forces due to end rotations, it's a little bit easier to just use the tabulated values. So we draw the shears according to the diagram. We notice that if all the values are positive right here, then the direction of the arrow on the diagram corresponds to the direction that the shears actually act. So we draw both of these upward. Similarly, on the right-hand side, we draw them both upward. And now it's a matter of filling in the values. WL squared over 12 on either end corresponds right here to F1 and F2. We'll notice that the direction of F2 is different than what I've drawn, so that's consistent with the negative sign right there. We can fill in the values of the shear, WL over 2, WL over 2, which we could have identified directly from statics. On the right-hand member, we have a value of moment WL squared over 8, and the shears F3 corresponds to the side that has the moment. That's 5 WL over 8. F2 corresponds to the side that has no moment. That's 3 WL over 8. The appendix has Q, our problem has W, and that's why I've made that substitution. We now have all the building blocks that we need to understand the stiffness method. And that's what's next, an example application of the stiffness method.